In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the binomial series to represent a function as a power series. So let's go ahead and start with this example. Let's say that f of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. How can we represent this as a power series? Now you need to be familiar with the formula when dealing with binomial series. And so here it is. 1 plus x raised to the k power is equal to the series 1 plus kx to the first power divided by 1 factorial plus k times k minus 1 x squared divided by 2 factorial plus k k minus 1 k minus 2 x to the third power divided by 3 factorial and then the next one is going to be k k minus 1 k minus 2 k minus 3 x to the fourth over 4 factorial and then the pattern will continue to repeat now what we need to do is represent this function in this form so let's take the 1 plus x squared term and move it to the top so we're going to have 1 plus x raised to the negative 2 power. And so you can clearly see that k is negative 2. So now plug in k into this expression. So we're going to have 1 minus 2x. And then it's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. x squared divided by 2 factorial. And then it's going to be negative 2. k minus 1 is still negative 3. k minus 2, that's negative 2 minus 2. And so that's going to be negative 4 times x cubed over 3 factorial. And then the next term is going to be negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then k minus 3, negative 2 minus 3, that's negative 5. Times x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial. So let's see if we could simplify the expression. So notice that 2 factorial and 2 can be canceled. And so we're going to have positive 3x squared for the third term. Now 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So 3 factorial is 6. We can cancel it with the 2 and 3 above. And so we're going to be left with negative 4x cubed. And 4 factorial is basically 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So this is going to leave us with positive 5x to the fourth. And then the pattern will repeat. Now, how can we express this series using sigma notation? So what do we see that's going on here? So this is the n equals 0 term, and this is the n equal 1 term, and that's n equal 2, and so forth. So we're going to start from 0 to infinity. And so notice that the exponents on x corresponds to the n value. For this, this is n equal 4, n equal 3, n equal 2, 1, and 0. So we're going to have x to the n. Now the coefficients, they're always one more than n. So this is 3, that's 2. This is 4, that's 3. So therefore, we can represent the coefficients as n plus 1. Now the last thing we need to deal with are the alternating signs, positive, negative, positive, negative. So this is going to be negative 1 raised to the n power. When n is 0, negative 1 to the 0 power will give us positive 1. And when n is 1, negative 1 to the first power will give us the negative sign in front of 2x. 
And so this particular power series corresponds to 1 plus x raised to the negative 2. And so that's how you can use the binomial series in order to represent a function as a power series. Now we're going to try another example. 1 divided by 2 plus x raised to the third power. So first, let's put it in the appropriate form. So that is 1 plus x raised to the k form. So what we're going to do is take the 2 plus x to the third power and move it to the top. So then this is equal to 2 plus x raised to the negative 3. Actually, before we do that, we need to make this a 1 because we have to turn it to 1 plus x raised to the k. And so we need to make this a 1 first. How can we do that? In the bottom, let's take out a 2. If we factor out a 2, we're going to have 1 plus x over 2. And this is all raised to the third power. So then we could say that we can distribute the 3 to the 2 and the 1 plus x over 2. So this is 1 over 2 to the third times 1 plus x divided by 2 to the third power. So now we can move this to the top. And so this becomes... I'm going to separate the 2 to the 3rd. So it's 1 over 2 to the 3rd, I kept that on the bottom, times 1 plus x over 2 to the negative 3. So now it's in the right form. We have the 1, and we have k. k is negative 3 in this example. And everywhere we see an x, we're going to replace it with x over 2. So let's start by writing out the formula. 1 plus x raised to the k. And so we know it's going to be 1 plus kx to the first power divided by 1 factorial plus k times k minus 1 x to the second power divided by 2 factorial plus k k minus 1, k minus 2, x cubed, divided by 3 factorial, and then that will continue on. So what we have is 1 over 2 to the third times 1 plus x divided by 2 raised to the negative 3. So k is negative 3. So this is going to be 1 plus, let's replace k of negative 3. So we have negative 3 times x to the first power over 1 factorial. And what I'm going to do, which I forgot to do, is distribute the 1 over 2 to the third. Let's not forget to do that. So it's going to be this number times 1. So the first one's going to be 1 over 2 to the third. And then we're going to have plus k is negative 3, and then we have x to the first power over 2 to the third times 1 factorial. And I'm forgetting to do something else. The second thing I forgot to do is replace x with x over 2. So instead of writing x to the first power, we're going to write x over 2 to the first power. And then divide it by 2 to the third, because of this number, times 1 factorial. This problem is tricky, and you got to be very careful. I know I do. I almost made two mistakes here. Now the next one, it's going to be k, which is negative 3, and then k minus 1. So that's going to be negative 4, because that's negative 3 minus 1. And then replacing x with x over 2, and we need to square it. 
And then on the bottom, we're going to have 2 to the third times 2 factorial. And let's continue this so to see if we can identify some sort of pattern. Now, the next one is going to be negative 3, negative 4, and then 4k minus 2, that's negative 3 minus 2, so we have a negative 5. And then let's replace x with x divided by 2 raised to the third power. And we're going to have 2 to the third, but this time times 3 factorial. And I think this is a, a good stopping point. So let's get rid of this. Now the first term is not going to change. So let's just rewrite that. 1 over 2 to the third power. Now for the second term, we're going to get rid of the negative sign. So it's going to be negative, and then we're just going to write this as positive 3. And then we have x to the first power. And I'm going to combine this 2 with this, those 2s. And so this 2 belongs in the bottom with this one, so it becomes 2 to the 4th power. And then times 1 factorial. Now, these two negative signs will cancel, and so the next term becomes positive. Thus, we have an alternating series. And I'm not going to multiply 3 times 4. I'm going to leave it as 3 times 4 because there's a pattern that's developing. And then I have x squared. And then this is 2 squared on the bottom times 2 to the third. So that becomes 2 to the fifth power and then times 2 factorial. Now I have three negatives, so the next term is going to be negative, and then it's 3 times 4 times 5 times x to the third power, and then 2 to the third power times 2 to the third power, that becomes 2 to the sixth power times 3 factorial, and then it continues again. Now, let's see if we can write this as a series. And we're going to start the series at 0, and we're going to go to infinity. So, the first thing we can see is that... Let me write out the numbers. Okay, this is just having some issues. My computer always have issues. Now, for the first term, n is 0. This, this corresponds to n equal 1, and this is for n equal 2, and this is for n equal 3. It's good to write that down so you can write your formula that can give you the right terms for this whole series. Now, let's start with the signs. So when n is 0, we have a positive sign. And when n is 1, we have a negative sign. So we need to use negative 1 to the n. Because negative 1 to the 0 gives us positive 1. So that's the first thing we need to deal with. Now, the next thing that we need to deal with are the numbers 3, 4, and 5. So what do you see there? Let's focus on this. 5 times 4 times 3. That is some sort of factorial. For example, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then here we have 3 factorial. But notice that this 3 corresponds to n equal 3. So on the bottom, we simply have n factorial. But the 5 is 2 more than n equals 3. So then we could say that the 5 factorial on top, that corresponds to n plus 2 factorial, because there's always 2 more than our n value. So when n is 2, 2 plus 2 will give us 4. When n is 1, 1 plus 2 gives us 3. When n is 0, where is the 2 factorial? I don't know, but we'll figure that out soon. But for now, let's go with... Let's 
let's go with n plus 2 factorial. Once again, my computer is acting up. Now, the next thing we could see is the exponent of x. It corresponds to n. So that's going to be x to the n power. And then finally, the exponents on the 2s. So this is 3 more than n. And then this is 4, n is 1, so that's 3 more than n as well. So it appears as if we have 2 to the n plus 3. Now keep in mind, this is not the final answer, so don't go running off to the next problem. Because we still need to fix what we have. And right now, this series, it appears to relate to the series that we have on the board, but it doesn't yet, and we still need to make some changes, so don't run away just yet. The first thing we could do is cancel out the factorials. n plus 2 factorial is n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n factorial. And therefore, we can cancel out n factorial. Now, is everything OK? Can we leave the answer like this? Does it fit the series? So let's plug in some values. Let's start with n equals 0. When n is 0, negative 1 to the 0 power is 1. And then this becomes 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 1. So that's 2 times 1, which is 2. And then we'll have x to the 0. And then this would be 0 plus 3, or 2 to the third power. So this is really, x to the 0 is 1. So this becomes 1 over 2 squared, not 1 over 2 to the third power. So we're missing a 2. So that tells us that we need to add another 2 to the bottom. Now, looking at the second one, let's say when n is 1, let's see what's going on here. So negative 1 to the first power, and then times 1 plus 2, which is 3, times 1 plus 1, which is 2, and then x to the first, divided by 2 raised to the 1 plus 3, times 1 factorial. So we do have a negative sign. There's a 3, and we have an x. Now, this is 2 to the 4th power, but we can cancel a 2. So, in the end, we just get 2 to the 3rd power on the bottom. So, there's an extra 2 that we're seeing at the top. Because this is 1 less than what we need. So, this indicates that we need to multiply our final answer by 1 over 2 in order to make it work. And let's see if this is going to work for n equal 2. So let's check the next term. So when n is 2, we have negative 1 squared times 2 plus 2, which is 4, times 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then it's going to be x squared divided by 2 to the 2 plus 3, which is 5, times 2 factorial. So now we don't have a 2 on the top, so, which is good. We have our 3 and 4, which we see here. We have 2 to the 5th power and a 2 factorial. So that appears to be good. Now, hold up. I just made a very crucial mistake. This should not be 2 factorial. The reason for that is we canceled n factorial. However, we do have another 2 on the outside, so I'm going to put that here. And this 2, it makes this expression equal to what I have there. So negative 1 squared, that becomes just 1. And then I have a 3, a 4, and an x squared. And 2 to the 5th times 2 is the same or equivalent to 2 to the 5th times 2 factorial. 
So by adding this extra 2, this whole series works. This expression now will give us everything that we see here. And just to be on the safe side, you can check the next one, n equals 3. So when n is 3, negative 1 to the third power, that's going to be negative 1, giving us this sign. And then n plus 2, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So we get 4 times 5. Somehow we need to find a way to get this 3. So we'll talk about that. And then we have x to the n, or x to the third power. And then 2 to the n plus 3. So n is 6, 3 plus 3 is 6. And then we have this additional 2 on the outside. Now, let's see if what we have here is equal to what we see there. So let's start with this. So we have negative 3 times 4 times 5 times x cubed over 2 to the 6 and then 3 factorial which is 3 times 2 times 1. So notice the 3's cancel and that's why we don't have it here which is good. We do have the 4, 5, and x cubed. Now the last thing we can see is 2 to the 6 times 2 that's the same as 2 to the 6 times 2. So these two are equal. So we therefore now have the appropriate series for this problem. Now let's write our final answer. So 1 divided by 2 plus x raised to the third power. This is equal to the series from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n plus 2 times n plus 1 times x raised to the n and then we could combine these two so that's 2 raised to the n plus 3 times 2 to the 1 so we're going to add n plus 3 plus 1 so that becomes 2 to the n plus 4 and so this is our final answer Whew, I'm glad we're done with this problem. That was a monster problem. Now, let's try something simpler than the last one. So, we're going to try the square root of 1 plus x. Go ahead and use the binomial series to write a power series for that. So, the first thing we're going to do is rewrite it as 1 plus x raised to the 1 half. And let's start by writing the formula. So 1 plus x raised to the k. That's 1 plus kx to the first power over 1 factorial plus k times k minus 1 x squared over 2 factorial and then k, k minus 2. I mean, I skipped 1. That's very important k minus 1, k minus 2, and then x cubed divided by 3 factorial. So now we have 1 plus x raised to the 1 half. So we can see that k is 1 half. So that's going to be 1 plus 1 half x to the first power over 1 factorial. And then we're going to have another k so that's 1 half again. And then we have k minus 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then it's x squared divided by 2 factorial. And then it's going to be k again. And then k minus 1. k minus 2, that's a half minus 2. So that's 1 half minus 4 over 2, which is negative 3 over 2 if you get common denominators. Now, let's write one more term. So then it's going to be plus k, k minus 1, k minus 2, and then k minus 3 is next. So that's going to be 1 half minus 3, which is 1 half minus 6 over 2, 
and so that's going to give us negative 5 over 2. So we could see a pattern developing times x to the fourth over 4 factorial. So let's simplify what we have. We have a 1 plus, now I'm going to bring the 2 to the bottom. So this is x to the first power, 1x to the first power, divided by 2 to the first power times 1 factorial. And then the next term is going to be negative, so let's take out the negative sign. And then we have 1 times 1 times x squared. And this time, we have 2 times 2, or 2 squared, on the bottom, times a 2 factorial. And then, now we have 2 negatives, so the next term is going to be positive. And the numbers are 1, 1, and 3. So let's write that out. So 1 times 1 times 3 times x to the third power, divided by... This time we have three twos, so we could say two to the third power times three factorial. Now the next term, because there's three negatives, overall that's negative, and then it's one times one times three times five times x to the fourth power divided by, now we have four twos, so that's two to the fourth power times 4 factorial. So notice a new pattern developing here. It's a 1, and then a 3, and then a 5. So a pattern is developing at the n equal 2 term. This is n equal 1, n equal 0, 3, and 4. But let's focus on these numbers. So we're going to start our series at n equal 2, because that's when we have the numbers 1, 3, 5, where we see a new pattern developing. So to 1, 3, 5, the next one is 7. So this corresponds to n equal 2, that corresponds to n equal 3. And so going back, you know, one unit on the left, this is going to be for n equal 1. And so this is an arithmetic, excuse me, an arithmetic sequence that just didn't want to roll nicely off the tongue. And so that's going to be a sub n, which is a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub 1, that's negative 1. And the common difference is 2. So this is negative 1 plus 2n minus 1. I mean, not minus 1, but minus 2, because negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And so a sub n is... 2n minus 3. And so that explains the pattern of numbers that we see highlighted in those blue boxes. So now let's write out the series using summation notation. So we're going to have 1 plus x over 2 because we're going to start at n equal 2, so we just have to rewrite what we see here. And then let me put this a little bit lower. And then it's going to be plus. We're going to start at 2. We're going to go to infinity. Now, the first term has a negative sign. So we have an alternating series. Therefore, this is going to be negative 1 raised to the n plus 1. Because when n is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. Or, you could use negative 1 to the n minus 1. That could work too. If you plug in 2, you get negative 1 to the first power, that's negative as well. And then we're going to write out the numbers that we see in the blue boxes. So 1 times 3 times 5, if you want to, times 7. And this will continue all the way to our 2n minus 3 that we got for the arithmetic sequence. Now I'm running out of space because I need to put x to the n power. So let's see if I can fit that here. 
and then divide it by this is going to be 2 to the n power because the 3 matches with n equal 3 and we can see that the 4 matches with n equal 4 so that's 2 to the n and then 4 factorial matches with n equals 4 so times n factorial and so this is it this is the series that corresponds to the square root of 1 plus x. Here's another problem that we could try. Let's work on this one. 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x. So feel free to pause the video and give it a shot. So let's convert the square root into a rational exponent. So this is 1 minus x to the 1 half. And then we're going to move this to the top. So that's 1 minus x raised to the negative 1 half. And just so it's easy to follow along, let's write out the formula for the binomial series. So 1 plus x raised to the k, we know it's 1 plus kx to the first power over 1 factorial plus k, k minus 1 x to the second power over 2 factorial plus k, k minus 1, k minus 2, and you know the rest. So let's follow along. So 1 minus x to the negative 1 half, that's going to be 1 plus, so we can see that k is negative 1 half. So we have negative 1 half. And then we're dealing with negative x. So negative x to the first power divided by 1 factorial. And then for the next one, it's going to be k, which is still a negative 1 half. And then k minus 1. So negative 1 half minus 1. That's negative 3 over 2. And then this is going to be negative x squared over 2 factorial. And then the next term, that's going to be k, k minus 1, and then k minus 2, that's negative 1 half minus 2, which is negative 1 half minus 4 over 2, and so that's negative 5 over 2. And then negative x to the third power divided by 3 factorial. Now for the last one, it's going to be plus negative 1 half, negative 3 over 2, negative 5 over 2, and then it's going to be k minus 3, so negative 1 half minus 3, or negative 1 over 2 minus 6 over 2, which is negative 7 over 2, times x to the fourth, divided by 4 factorial. So the first term is 1, and then we have two negatives, so that's going to be positive. And then we have 1 times x to the first power divided by 2 to the first power times 1 factorial. Now for the next one, negative squared, that's positive. And then we have these two negatives, which make it positive. So this whole thing is going to be a positive term. And then it's 1 times 3, as we see here. And then we have 2 squared on the bottom. Let's not forget x squared. And then 2 squared on the bottom times 2 factorial. Now for the next term, notice that we have 6 negatives. 3, 4, 5, 6. So this whole thing is going to remain positive. By the way, this was supposed to be negative x to the fourth, but when you raise it to the fourth power, it becomes positive x to the fourth. So it won't change our answer. So we don't have an alternating series. So the next one is going to be 1, 3 times 5, and then positive x cubed. Here we have three twos. So it's going to be 2 to the 3rd 
times 3 factorial. And for the last one, there's a total of 8 negatives, 4 and another 4. So that's going to be positive again. And then 1 times 3 times 5 times 7 times x to the 4 divided by 2 to the 4 times 4 factorial. So let's identify each term. So this is the n equals 0 term, n equal 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's start with the patterns of numbers that we see here. This is 1, and then 3, and then 5, and 7. So we have an arithmetic sequence, 1, 3, 5, 7, all of these numbers being multiplied to each other. And this is the n equal 1 term. This is the n equal 2 term. And so let's use the general formula for an arithmetic series. So our a sub 1 term, that's 1 plus n minus 1. And the common difference is 2 because the numbers are going up by 2. So this is going to be 2n minus 2. And then we have 1 plus negative 2, which is negative 1. So 2n minus 1 describes the sequence of numbers that we see being multiplied to each other. So the series is going to start here. So we're going to say this equals 1 plus the series, starting from n equal 1. Now, we don't have to worry about alternating signs. We don't have an alternating series. So we don't need negative 1 to the n or negative 1 to the n plus 1. So let's write out the numbers in the blue box. So it's 1 times 3 times 5 times 7. And this will continue all the way to 2n minus 1. And then we have x to the fourth, which corresponds to n equal 4. So therefore, that's going to be x to the n power. And then we have 2 to the third, which corresponds to n equal 3. So that's 2 to the n. And 3 factorial also corresponds to n equal 3, the same way as 4 factorial corresponds to n equal 4. So that's going to be times n factorial. And so that's it for this problem. So all of this is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x. So that's how you can use the binomial series to write a power series for such a function. We're going to work on one final example. And this time it's going to be the cube root of 1 plus x. So go ahead and try that problem. The first thing I'm going to do is write it as 1 plus x to the 1 third. And so let's write the formula. 1 plus x to the k. So that's 1 plus kx to the first power over 1 factorial plus k times k minus 1 x to the second over 2 factorial plus k k minus 1 k minus 2 x to the third power over 3 factorial. Now, in this problem, k is 1 third. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So 1 plus x to the 1 third, that's going to be 1 plus 1 over 3 times x to the first power over 1 factorial. And then it's going to be k again. And then k minus 1, 1 over 3 minus 1 is 1 over 3 minus 3 over 3, which is negative 2 over 3, and then times x squared divided by 2 factorial, and then plus 1 over 3, negative 2 over 3, and then we have k minus 2, so 1 over 3 minus 2, that's 1 over 3 minus 6 over 3, which is negative 5 over 3, and then x cubed divided by 3 factorial, and then it's going to be 1 over 3, negative 2 over 3, negative 5 over 3. And then what's the next number? 
So we're going to have the k minus 3 term. And so 1 over 3 minus 3, that's 1 over 3 minus 9 over 3. And 1 minus 9 is negative 8. So this is going to be negative 8 over 3, x to the fourth power, divided by 4 factorial. So we're going to write this out as 1 plus 1 times x to the first power divided by 3 to the first power times 1 factorial. And then the next term is going to be negative. So we're going to have 1 times 2 times x to the second power. And then we have two 3's on the bottom. So this is going to be 3 squared times 2 factorial, and then plus 1 times 2 times 5 times x to the third, and then this is going to be 3 to the third times 3 factorial, and then after that it's going to be negative 1 times 2 times 5 times 8, and then times x to the fourth over 3 to the fourth times 4 factorial. So the first pattern starts here, 2, 5, and then 8. And so this is our n equals 0 term, n equal 1, n equal 2, 3, and 4. So we have 2, 5, 8, and then before that, negative 1. So when n is 2, we get the number 2. When n is 3, we get 5. And when n is 1, it's negative 1. So let's write out the arithmetic sequence. So a sub 1 is 1, and then it's plus n minus 1. Now the numbers are going up by positive 3, so the common difference is 3. So this is going to be 3n minus 3. The 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2, so that's going to be 3n minus 2. Actually, I think I'm missing something. This should be negative 1. So negative 1 plus negative 3, that's negative 4. Got to watch out for those mistakes. Now, where does the pattern start? The blue boxes, they start at n equal 2. So we're going to rewrite the first two terms. So this is going to be 1 plus x over 3, and then plus. So we're going to start at n equals 2 and go to infinity. Now, the first term is negative. So this is going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1. So when n is 2, we're going to have negative 1 to the third power, which will give us the negative sign. Now the first number is 2, and then 5, and then 8. So if you plug in n equal 2, you're going to get 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 4, and that gives you the 2. When n is 3, it will be 3 times 3, which is 9, minus 4, and that will give you the 5. When n is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 4, that gives you the 8. So this will continue all the way to 3n minus 4. And then we're going to have, so these two correspond to each other, so that's x to the n, and then divided by these numbers correspond, as you can see here. So it's going to be 3 to the n times n factorial. And so all of that is equal to the cube root of 1 plus x. And so that's the answer. That's how you can write the power series using the binomial series. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.